if god cannot do something then why he is almighty god how can we accept him as almighty god the question is like this if almighty god cannot take a human form if almighty god you say that cannot become avatar cannot send messengers if almighty god cannot take birth as a human being if he cannot do something then how he can be almighty god is a famous question normally it comes to me in my channel and i made a reply around two days back in my channel as well in tamil so i wanted to quickly explain to you in english as well i have made several videos on the similar topic but just to reclarify first of all it is not that almighty god cannot do something we have to understand the swarup of almighty god in one of the rigveda mantra third mandal 56th sukta the first mantra god says om nata minanti mayino na dira vrata devanam prathama druvani na rodasi adruha vedya birna parvata nīname tastuvān sah see here almighty god says that original and inviolable are the laws made by the divine that is almighty god's laws are inviolable cannot be violated and they are original they are natural laws enchanters cannot transgress them and the wise men of steady mind do not violate them neither the heaven nor the earth nor the scholars free from hate and jealousy with all their power and knowledge nor the fixed mountains can break or bend the strong and the resolute so this is a ved mantra which clearly says that almighty god's rules and regulations made by almighty god in the vedas are unchangeable unchallengeable inviolable cannot be violated by anyone so if anyone cannot violate the rules of almighty god naturally almighty god also will not violate his rules because god is called as satya god is called as truth he never speaks falsehood so if god says in the vedas sa pariyagat shukram akayam avrinam asna virang god says akayam i am bodiless asna virang i don't have a nervous system that means god will never take a body either it is a human body or any other body god will never assume a form and god says akayam no body i don't have a body and god says in another mantra na tasya pratima asti after tall mighty god there is no form there is no image there is no photograph there is no statue there is no idol etc etc of course this statement is widely popularly used by all the muslim brothers but this is not linked to allah Allah mentioned in Quran the quality of Allah mentioned in Quran and the quality of almighty god as per vedas are totally different i made several videos please go through my playlist zakir nayak and related videos so why god cannot take an avatar why god cannot take a human form is because god does not violate his own rules the rules are clearly mentioned by almighty god himself in the vedas and god says for example a beautiful ved mantra yajurveda 40 by for god says anejadekam manaso javiyo anejat ejat means vibration ejat means movement or kampan in hindi there is no vibration there is no movement in almighty god means god cannot move god does not vibrate why manaso javiyo god is more minute or more powerful more suksham than the mind for example we are thinking that about america in within a fraction of second our mind will go to america but here god is saying that manaso javiyo nainan deva apnuvan purva marshat before your mind reaches before your indriya the senses reaches anywhere i already reach there because i am already omnipresent there so being omnipresent god cannot move god does not move so when we say that somebody has taken birth that rama has taken avatar krishna has taken avatar somebody is taking uh, claiming divinity he is almighty god that means he rama moved from ayodhya to sri lanka for war sri krishna moved from mathura to hastinapur to other places during the war and during the other uh, you know periods of his lifetime that means he cannot be god because god cannot move god does not move god does not take body akayam these are fundamentals the laws and rules of vedas which everybody has to understand and adopt the vedic dharma in life we cannot challenge almighty god in every portion that if god cannot do something then he cannot be god god cannot do adulteration god cannot speak lies 
God cannot do injustice. That means I am doing a karma. God cannot say that okay, okay, you have done a karma, right? I will not punish you. I will punish somebody else. God cannot do this kind of injustice things. God cannot speak lies. That means the truth of Vedas cannot be violated. So these are the things which is not limiting Almighty God. In fact, these are the things which are praising Almighty God. That God does not tell lies. God does not do injustice. God cannot die. If somebody says he is Almighty God, he has to do everything. Then can God die? No, God cannot die. God does not die. God is Swayambhu. God cannot take birth. God is always existent. So these are some of the swaroop or the definition or the quality attributes of Almighty God which we must be very very thorough and clear so that nobody can confuse us. And in the next mantra, Yajurveda, God says Anejat Ekam, I told you, right? Anejat means Ekam, God is always one and Anejat means He does not move, He does not have vibration. This is the fourth mantra, fifth mantra, God further clarifies. Tat ejati, tat na ejati, tad ejati, tan na ejati, tad dure, tad vanti ke. God says, tat ejati, that Almighty God moves. Tat na ejati, that Almighty God does not move. So people get confusion that why God says I can move. So probably God can take avatar. No. God in the previous mantra clarified that God does not move because he is omnipresent. So in the next mantra, God says, in the eyes of fools, in the eyes of Agyani, in the eyes of those people who does not know Vedas, God moves. That means, if somebody says that Bhagavan Vishnu is in going in Garuda and then from there he came down to save an elephant, God is moving from there to here, he is Agyani, he does not know the knowledge of Vedas, he does not understand me. That's why in the eyes of Agna, Agyani, God moves. Whereas, Tatna Yejati, God does not have vibration, he does not move. And for those people who say that God takes avatar, who takes, who says that God is an idol, etc., idol worship is okay, etc., for those people, God says, Tad dure, I am, I am not reachable for them. And Tad Vantike, for those people who are abiding the Vedic rules, who are worshipping the God as per Vedas, who are doing Stuti, Prasthana, Upasana, who are doing everyday name jap, who are striving hard for practicing Brahmacharya and Ashtanga Yoga, God says, Tad Antike, I am already inside you. I am just very near to you because you are striving very hard. I will be manifesting myself within yourself only. You can realize me inside yourself. Tad Antike. So God is giving a very clear definition on what you should do, what you should not do. We cannot say that if God cannot do something, He is not God. If we say this kind of statement, we are actually Agyani. We are not able to understand the Swarup of Almighty God. God can do everything that is possible, scientifically and acceptable. Like, you know, we, we can accept that in our consciousness. For example, somebody says God can do adulteration. God can do anything. God can do violence. God can do, uh, you know, injustice. If somebody says like this, then he is not speaking about the Almighty God. He is speaking about some other book which may say like this. But Almighty God in Vedas are defined very clearly. God is trying to tell His knowledge, His attribute, everything very clearly in the Vedas. And God has told in this Rigveda Mantra which I told, Nata Minanti, nobody can violate my laws. Nobody can change my laws. Even the big, big mountains or the earth or the sun, moon or the heaven means the Antariksha, the big, big stars, planets cannot violate my laws. So we have to always abide and be submissive in front of Almighty God. And there is only one God. It is not any other God other than the God of Vedas. Na anya pantaha vidyate ayanaya. There is no other path. There is only one path and that is the Vedic path. Thank you so much. Namaste. Oh.